With GraphQL Federation, you can bring together multiple GraphQL schemas. And in this video, I'll be showing how you can declaratively federate two GraphQL APIs using StepSend. The data sources we'll be using is one, the GitHub GraphQL API, and two, a Fauna GraphQL API. And as you might know, Fauna is a serverless NoSQL database that exposes a GraphQL API, meaning that we can combine this GraphQL API with the GitHub API using StepSend. Let's start by using the GitHub GraphQL API in the Explorer page in the documentation. In here, we first need to sign up with our GitHub account as we're using real-life production data when using the GitHub GraphQL API. As soon as we are logged in, you can use the sample query to retrieve the name of the person that is authenticated, which in this case is me, Roy Dirks. For this video, we'll be using a separate query as we will be combining the information of GitHub with the information from a Fauna database. So the query I'll be running is this one, where I'm getting the repositories for a user called Octocat. Or actually, I can use my own GitHub name, which is Roy Dirks. So this will retrieve my first five repositories, including its ID, name, and description. Using StepSend, I will combine these repositories with data from Fauna. So in Fauna, I will be storing some repositories, such as the ones you just saw on the graphical for GitHub. And I also will be storing a collection called highlighted, meaning that we will be taking repositories from GitHub and store them as highlighted repositories in a Fauna database. This could, for example, be useful when you're building a upvote system for GitHub repositories. Now that we know how to collect data from the GitHub GraphQL API, let's continue by going to Fauna. As I told you in the beginning, Fauna is a serverless NoSQL database. And what is pretty cool is that it exposes a GraphQL API. And we can use this GraphQL API, of course, to combine our data from the GitHub GraphQL API with Fauna using StepSend and GraphQL Federation. But first, we need to set up a database in Fauna. For this, we need to go to the Fauna dashboard where we can log in or create a new account. As I already created an account before, I can just log in using my GitHub social login. It will bring me to the Fauna dashboard where I can create a new database just by pressing one simple button. So once I press create database, it will prompt me for a database name, which we can call steps and demo. And then it will ask me what region I like to place this database in. I can go for the classic one, Europe, or the United States. In this case, I will be going for United States. The step send is also hosted in the US. Once I press create, it will start creating my new database, which is almost done instantly. And from this database dashboard, I can create my first collection, for example, by pressing this button. But what we'll be doing instead is we'll be taking a GraphQL schema and use this GraphQL schema as the base for a GraphQL API. So once I press import schema, it will prompt me to upload a new file that will be used to create a database. All that we'll be using to upload this new database is called faunadb.graphql. And as you can see, it has two types in there and two queries. One query to get a list of repositories and another query to get a list of highlighted repositories. And it's using a custom directive that is working with Fauna, which is at relation. Using this schema, Fauna can generate a new database for me that is having two collections. One is called highlights and the other is called repository that also have a relationship with each other. And then it will also create some CRUD operations for these two collections. So after importing this new GraphQL schema into Fauna, this will give me a graphical explorer, which I can then use to query my new GraphQL schema. There won't be any data in there as we haven't uploaded any but we can actually upload data using this GraphQL playground. So we'll be going to docs. I can find all the queries and mutations that Fauna created for me, which are queries to get all the repositories, all the highlights, and also to find highlights of repositories by ID. But more importantly, it created mutations which I can use to create a new repository or to update highlighted repositories. So what I will be doing, I will be adding a new repository in my Fauna database that is quite similar to the repositories that we saw before. So let me just copy this mutation, which is called create repository. It will need an owner, which in this case is Octocad, and a name Hello World. So instead of using this build-in, I will create my own owner and name for the database through my previous query. So let me take this maps repository, 
and insert it into the Fauna database. And then the owner will be my GitHub account, which is Roy Dirks. So as soon as I run this, it will insert this data into my Fauna collection. We'll be going to collections. You can find a new repository has been added um, with the information we also just added in here. But more importantly, it also created a reference ID that I will need to copy to my clipboard because that way I can mark this repository as a highlighted repository. So let me go back to the graphical playground where I need to delete the already existing mutation, use this new reference, and use a mutation to create a new highlight. Doing this, I have a great highlight with data repository connect, and this connect will be the ID of the new record I created in my collection for repositories. So once I press go here, it will create the connection uh, with this repository in the highlight collection. We're going here, you can see a repository is created, which we just done. And then it also has a highlighted repository, which is the collection that we created uh, just now by running this mutation. Now that we've set up both GraphQL APIs, the one for GitHub and the one for Fauna, we can continue by building the GraphQL schema with StepSend that federates data from the two GraphQL APIs. In a fresh VS Code project, I will use the steps and CLI to generate schemas for both Fauna and GitHub, and then I will create a new schema to merge the two GraphQL schemas for these other two data sources. I will use the steps and CLI that you can install from npm by running npm install global and steps and, which I've already done on my machine. So what I need to do to continue is use the command steps and import GraphQL. That's the command to generate a GraphQL schema based on another GraphQL API. The first time I run this, it will prompt me for the name of the endpoint that I'm creating, which is the endpoint that your GraphQL API for steps in, so the combined GraphQL API for GitHub and Fauna, will be available later on. For this, I'd like to go for API slash with Fauna, and then it will prompt me for the GraphQL endpoint URL of the GraphQL API I'm importing. So the first GraphQL API we'll be importing is the GitHub GraphQL API, for which the endpoint is this one, which I'm copying from GitHub. It will ask me if I want to add a prefix to all generated type names, which I like to do. I like to go for GitHub underscore. And I also like to use this prefix to be added to my query imitation fields. And this prefix is important because this will make sure that there will be no conflicting types between GitHub and Fauna. And then finally, it will ask me for a header, such as a header for authentication. As the GitHub GraphQL API requests authentication, I need to add a authorization header here as well. And the header I'm using is using a bearer token that I need in order to use the GitHub GraphQL API. And I've blurred out the bearer token just to make sure that no one is able to access my own GraphQL API. As soon as I press enter, it will start uh, generating a GraphQL schema for the GitHub GraphQL API. It will do so in a new directory called GraphQL that will include a index.graphql file with all the types and queries that are available for the GitHub GraphQL API. So what we do, we just introspect the GraphQL schema for GitHub and generate a new GraphQL schema based on that file. As you can see, there are a couple of hundred, even thousand lines, including a number of mutations and queries. We won't be diving too much into this GraphQL schema just yet, because first we want to import the Fauna GraphQL API, for which I will be clearing my terminal, and I'm going to run steps and import GraphQL again. And this time I need to give it my uh, Fauna database details. If you have your GraphQL API for Fauna hosted in the US, the endpoint will be this, but you can also find the endpoint on your Fauna dashboard. I also like to use a prefix, and this time it is uh, Fauna underscore. Uh, shoot the type prefix, we added to queries and mutations as well. Uh, the similar as for GitHub, I will be pressing yes. And then the final step is add an HTTP header. Again, I need to use an authentication header to be sure that I can import. Uh, my Fauna and GraphQL API, because without authentication, it won't work. You can find the Fauna API key by going back to your GraphQL playground 
and scroll down to HTTP headers. And there you can find the authorization header uh, that says basic, and then it will include an API key. And you can just copy paste this and bring it over to the steps and CLI when importing the Fauna GraphQL API. After adding my FaunaDB API key to the import, it generates a new GraphQL schema that you can find in this directory GraphQL-0. It includes several queries and mutations, which are the same mutations and queries that we saw earlier on in the GraphQL playground on the Fauna website. The only thing to deploy my GraphQL API is running steps and start, which will deploy these two GraphQL schemas to steps and cloud. It will deploy the schemas to the new endpoint called API slash with Fauna, linked to my steps and API account. As you can see here, I also have a localhost graphical that I can use for exploration, but I also have a production ready endpoint. And I also have a subscription endpoint in case I like to subscribe to data that is changing in my Fauna database. If I would go to the localhost endpoint in my browser, I can find a graphical interface that contains both my queries and mutations from Fauna and the queries and mutations from Gitto. So what I'd like to do in this video is combining a query from Fauna to get the highlighted repositories, which is called Fauna Highlights, from which I can get data, which is data about a repository, such as its name, the owner, some metadata like uh, maybe short description and maybe an image. Let's see what I have, an image maybe, like a cover image. So this is data I have available in Fauna. This will return the repository that I created at the beginning of this video in my Fauna to be collection. But this already exists in GitHub as well. So to get this information from GitHub, I can use a second query, which is GitHub underscore repositories, for which I need to provide a name, which is map in this case, and also owner which is my GitHub username, which is Roy Dirks. And then I could get fields from this, like the ID, uh, maybe a description. Uh, what else? Whatever is linked in there. Maybe some created app, and also the number of stargazers. Or actually, the total count of stargazers. If we're running this, we could get the information from GitHub for this specific GitHub repository. As you can see, the description is playing around with Google Maps. It's created at this date, and it also has a specific number of stargazers. But I also want to link this information to my Fauna database, but I don't want to store this data in two separate places. So what I will be doing instead, I'll be going to my VS Code project. In my VS Code project, I will be creating a new file called extents slash index.graphql. In this file, I will be extending the already existing type, which is fauna underscore repository. And to this type, I'll be adding a new field called GitHub details. And this GitHub details field will include all the information from the GitHub query we just saw. So let's make sure to set the uh, response type to the correct one, which is GitHub underscore repository. And then I'll be using a custom directive called App Materializer. And this is a steps and custom directive that helps you to link up queries to other queries. So what we're doing here is we'll be extending the already existing type Fauna underscore repository with a new field called GitHub Details. And then the information for GitHub Details will be coming from the query GitHub underscore repository, which is the query we just saw on the other screen. And also it will take the arguments. Um, name and owner, so we have name of the GitHub repository here, and then we have owner there. So let's save this file and also format it. Uh, and then the final step we need to do here is also add it to the index.graphql file, because that way Stepson will know it will need to uh, link this file up as well. So we have extents uh, slash index.graphql. We'll be saving this step, and we'll also take the new GraphQL file and deploy it to the cloud. In my graphical interface, I can now extend the Fauna underscore highlights query to also retrieve the field GitHub details. 
for which I can get the same information as I'm doing right here, which is ID, description, stargazers, and the created at date. Also delete the comments from there and prettify this. So what will happen? So Stepsen will pass the name and owner from Fana underscore highlights to the uh, query that we hooked up to get the details in order to retrieve all this data from GitHub. So if we run this query, it will not only get data from a Fana database, but it will also get information from GitHub. And of course, there are more connections you can make between Fana and Stepsen. In this video, you saw how easy it is to introspect two different GraphQL APIs using Stepsen and then federate them by just writing GraphQL SDL. And of course, there are more combinations you can make between the Fauna database, GitHub GraphQL APIs such as GitHub, and maybe even more data sources. With Stepsen, you can even federate non-GraphQL sources, meaning that if you would have data coming from a REST API, a SOAP API, or maybe a MySQL database, you can also combine it with other GraphQL APIs. There's much more to learn, so make sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video if you enjoyed our content.